It was full of Dan Campbell question, questionable coaching decisions. Maybe Brock Purdy MVP moment. Oh, no, God. What no. is our take on this game? Because there was a lot. Dan right. Campbell would hit on 20. <laughs> <laughs> he, if he was in blackjack and he had 20. He would hit. Hit me. <laughs> he yeah. would hit on 21. Yeah, Dan Gamble. I mean, look. Everybody. Wow, is, Dan Gamble's a great name. Dan I love Gamble? that. Yeah. Gamble. No, it's, I did not. What to make the, I did not. I stole that from the internet. I did not make that. But it's funny. It's really funny. But um, yeah, that I mean, that first half, they did exactly what we all thought that what I thought they were going to do, how the Lions were going to win this game, because it was going to be it's going to be the run game is how they're going to dominate. And that is exactly what they were doing, because the 49ers had issues with explosive run plays and with David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. They were doing exactly that. And apparently, Jameson Williams, who out of nowhere decided yeah. to be a crazy running back but all right whatever um they dominated they really did the 49ers offense didn't really look like it was in sync um the t- t- detroit defense was playing out of their mind yep, they let, in that only let up seven points in the first half they were pl- they were playing absolutely out of their minds they they had every ounce of momentum going in and then just the calls of by Dan Campbell I think and CJ Gardner Johnson waving at those fans. Things got tight. And that's it, what happened. like when they, when they hit adversity. Third quarter, they fell apart. Yep. Mm-hmm. That third quarter scoring was the 49ers scored 17 points. The Lions had zero. They let because I think they were like, okay, we're gonna play conservative. We have a lead. We don't want to like do anything stupid. We don't want to let them back into this too fast. And they took their foot off the gas way too much. Yeah, way, way too much. They were playing way too conservative. They were they were just letting the 49ers gash them throughout the entire game, and it was oh God. I mean, we'll get into the Dan Gamble yeah. calls at some point, but good lord, yeah. I understand the first fourth down call. The first one that he calls, it's you're trying to go up. I think it was that was in the first half, I believe, mm-hmm. actually, where they were trying to go up and it, it, just extend their lead. Sure, I'm I'm all for that. They were within their own. Yeah, like, it, was, it was a question between if we were going to go for a three score game, like you kick the field goal, you're up by three yeah. scores or whatnot. You're already up big at that point. I'm so, up the game cast to make sure yeah, that's yeah. accurate. But it. It was the right call. It worked. Like if Josh Reynolds could catch a pass, yeah, they would be totally, totally fine. Because it was the right play call. He was open, and he just couldn't hang on to it. Yep. Whatever. So yeah. It's with seven minutes left in the third quarter. Oh, third quarter. Um, okay, third yeah, quarter. Yeah. This is to go up. Whatever they were going to go up by. Um, because got okay. Forty Nine ers get a field goal. Yeah, and they could kick a field goal to keep it at a three score game. Yep. Fourth and two. At their at at San Francisco's twenty eight, so yeah. it would have been a chip shot field goal probably, and then they have a a pass that's open to Reynolds. Um, I think I would have kicked the field goal in that spot, but again, I think we can all understand that's logic. that's a worthy gamble right there. And fourth and two, statistically, you're likely to hit it. You're likely to hit it, and they, and it, the, and they did. Yeah. They just they just didn't convert. Like that's understandable. Whatever. The next one, <laughs> now, that fourth down call, what on God's green earth are we doing? Like, Dan yeah, so I can, down by three So and you go for it. Yeah. So the game cast here is it is fourth and three on San Francisco's 30. So they're in field goal range. They are down by three and they go for it with seven minutes left in the fourth. That there feels like a spot. Or you just tie up the game. You just yeah. tie the game. Like if you don't trust your defense that much, we got bigger problems there, Dan. Because was it what was it fourth and fourth and three on that one? Yeah. Fourth and three. Yeah. Okay. Because it wasn't until like Amon Ross St. Brown. Yep. I think. Yeah. Because it was like it was again, it was like or something. That yeah, it was that like ki- the pass was like kind of there, kind of not. Like it, it just looked like the play kind of got blown up a little bit. Kick the field goal and tie it up. You do not want to try to rely on onside kicks to win the game. Because if you don't get this, you're screwed. Well, so then even we can even talk about this more in his decisions. Um, He runs the ball on like a third down or whatever that ends up burning a lot of clock. Yeah. At one point, uh, I forget what point of the game it was, but there was no reason to run the ball. He should have called a timeout. Um, that was right they, at the, that was right at the end when they were trying to score the yep, touchdown. They, they go the ball. and yeah. they and this is another thing. They go for the touchdown mm-hmm. when really they 
oh, what they could have done is they went for the touchdown and they went on a fourth and goal. They should have kicked the field goal, not run the ball on the third down. Yes. Because then they could have kicked the ball to 49ers, three and out with timeouts, and gotten the ball back yes. to go score. Instead, they're relying on an onside kick, which is just highly improbable which in the NFL at this point. it almost worked, which is it, insane. Yeah. Like, it was very, very, very close to working. He was about, like, a half to a yard and a half, like, too close. Mm -hmm. But it was almost there. Yeah. Which is wild to say. But, yeah, it's just, like, after the whole year, like, that the the Lions have had, that Michigan as a whole has had, where it's like, oh, they won the... Aside from the Pistons. (laughs) Well, the the Pistons are irrelevant. Well, that's actually one of the big problems. The Pistons won that day. They did. The Pistons, along with CJ Gardner Johnson. What are we doing? <laughs> Why are you winning Pistons, today? You, no You're one was, six and forty. No one was watching your game. You should have just lost. Like, because st- uh, for anybody that doesn't know, there's a curse that only one Michigan slash Detroit team can win yeah, at a time, at in one day at a time. So the, the Pistons won. The sports gods were like, "Oh, the Pistons won." I guess. Oh, uh, okay, whatever. And then they look over and they see. Hey, C.J. Gardner Johnson's waving at fans at halftime. Yeah, no, nah, Detroit's not winning this game. We're gonna smite them real quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was saying to all of our guys after the game, Dan Campbell made fireable coaching he decisions. He should not get fired. He should not get fired at but, all. But but those are things that if you are Nick Sirianni, yes, you are a coach that has been in the system longer and haven't brought the lines back from how much hell they had been in. Yeah then you get fired because those were some bad decisions. Yeah. And there were also things that went wrong, right? Jameer Gibbs fumbled when the like at a really crucial spot where the momentum was switching. There was the stupid bounced interception yep, yeah, guy the head, whatever. And yeah. everything like they definitely like there were some things that happened there, but your coaching decisions, if you just kick two field goals, you win the game. And I know that's like playing revisionist history, but if you just kick two field goals on those fourth downs instead, you win the game. You win the game. Um and then even at the end using bad management of the clock is just is just very like suspect. So again, Dan Campbell, like not getting fired, but he should, let's be very clear. Dan Campbell should not get fired because you're right. After he has brought the, the lions back from being God awful to the NFC championship game. Yeah. Like this, this year for the lions, as much as it sucks that you lost in the NFC championship game, it was absolutely incredible. You have a ton of young guys on the roster. You have a lot. They have like sixty million dollars in cap space next year. Yep. Like you can build this team. Yeah, they have a lot of talent. They have a lot of talent. You got to work on the. You got to get another receiver, and you got to work on the defense. That's really about it. Yeah. yeah. And you with sixty million dollars in cap space and pretty much all your draft picks, you can do that. Yeah. Like they easily can. They have a bright future ahead of them, but. And they're getting their OC back. Get they're mm-hmm. keeping their OC, which is huge, huge for this team. But good lord, Dan Campbell! I you what I I respect his commitment to the bit because he lived by the gamble and he died by that. I gamble. do at least appreciate that he <laughs> yeah. didn't like. You'll see coaches kind of go away from what works in the playoffs. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I appreciate that he he went, stuck with it. He, he stuck, stuck to his with guns. his mindset, but. I mean, we also had been saying all year, like all the decisions Dan Campbell made all year were just wildly aggressive. And unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. So I, I could, if I was the GM, I, I would consider putting a kind of an assistant head coach in there to help with some maybe more game yeah. game management. <laughs> it's decisions. like a get back coach, but instead it's yeah. for like decisions. It's like, okay, Dan, they, calm down. <laughs> yeah, they do assistant head coaches all the time. They just yeah. hired one down in uh, in Carolina for uh, Dave Canales um, for his role. But yeah, I just think they need someone to manage that a little bit better. But Enough about the forty the Lions because they lost the game. The 49ers, did Brock Purdy answer the call? Did he show you enough?